Hello, I'm Betsy Ross and welcome to this edition of Healthline. September means the kids are back to school and sometimes it's a tough transition from summer fun. We'll talk with Dr. Jason Bloomline about how to help our children have the best school experience possible. And Rita Heikenfeld is here to share her expertise about sports nutrition for young athletes. That's all next and more on Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. Well, whether it's their first day of school ever or the first day of a new school, all kids can use some help in adjusting to new school experiences. Our first guest today, Dr. Jason Bloomline, is a clinical counselor. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I know that when I was getting ready to go back to school in the fall, I could never sleep the night before just because I was so excited about going back. I wasn't necessarily nervous, but you do get a little anxious about that. Is that normal? perfectly normal. Uh, it's normal to have butterflies, to feel anxious, even if you're going back to the same situation or schedule, the same school, um, just a new class. So that, you know, it's perfectly normal to feel anxious. It's something new. And, and especially for the parents, too. They're a little anxious, too, with uh, your youngsters going back to school. Certainly. So, all right, you get nervous. You're going back to school. It's a different schedule. Let's face it, in the summer, we slept in a little bit more. We stayed up a little bit longer can't do that now when you go back to school. Right. So what do you do? Best thing to do as a parent is to set a schedule and routine from the very beginning so children know what to expect, to have a set uh, dinner time, to have a set bedtime, and to have a, a set schedule in, in terms of homework, when to do homework. And that's a good, good point about homework because we see so often younger and younger kids come home with just tons of homework it seems like. It's a daunting task for any student. So how do you get back into that routine of sitting down and doing homework? Certainly, it's good to schedule homework and uh, to have a, a set routine in place. I recommend uh, the children do it as soon as they get home from school or as close thereafter. Uh, their energy level is high, um, their, their concentration is better, and, and simply they just have more energy. So it's better to, to get it out of the way than wait. So let's say that the youngsters are going back to a brand new school, or maybe this is the first time that they've gone to school in kindergarten or first grade. Brand new kids, they may not know them. How do you recommend youngsters and parents of these youngsters really work into getting their youngsters acclimated to a brand new situation? It's important for parents to have a, a good conversation with children and just to walk through with them what they can expect, uh, what they may experience, um, and to even practice things with them, um, how to say hello, greeting skills, um, just keep regular communication skills, how do you introduce yourself and make new friends, um, and, and to encourage them to put themselves out there. Unfortunately, kids can be cruel with their teasing, with their jokes, and sometimes it can escalate to being a bully a bullying situation. Yeah. That's a whole different thing from the regular playground teasing. How do youngsters and their parents handle a bully? It's, it's helpful and important uh, to practice it out with children, to role play it out, uh, and to practice with them what it might look like in the classroom, things that they could say, things that they could try uh, to, to resolve the situation, and for kids to know that they're not on their own. Ultimately, if they've tried everything that they can, that they have a teacher or they have their parents behind them to help them resolve the situation. So let's go back to uh, scheduling. As we said, once you go back to school, it's a brand new schedule. You have classes, you have homework, you have after school activities, you have sports, you have this, that, and the other. Kids have a lot on their plate. You've really got to be a time manager to make sure that your youngster gets to everything. Or is there a time that you step back and say, wait a minute? You know, it, it can happen. You can get overscheduled. You can get into too many things. Um, things to watch for is if a child's becoming overwhelmed or if they're procrastinating on, on different assignments um, or if they're just their attitude, how they respond to things. If that changes, um, they may need to pull back. When a parent sees children act differently, like you say, if they become withdrawn, if they start putting things off. 
When is it time to know that this is just adjusting to a situation? Or when is it time to really seek some professional help? Mm -hmm. If parents have done everything that they know to try with the child to remedy the situation, and teachers and, and school faculty are involved as well, um, it can be a good time to, to seek uh, additional help. And I always en encourage children and family to know that you don't have to have anything wrong with you to benefit from counseling. Um, you'll, you'll likely feel better to get things off your chest. It's confidential. I always share with children that what they tell me, unless there is a safety concern um, at stake, that, that what they tell me stays between uh, the two of us. So they feel comfortable and safe to share whatever is on their mind. From a parent's point of view, uh, sometimes it's a gut feeling. It may not be anything that's tangible, but maybe it's just a, a, a sense, a gut feeling in the parents. I hear that many times from parents, and I encourage them to trust their intuition. And just the gut feeling that, that perhaps something is of concern, and, and to follow that, to not uh, turn the other way. When a parent has a concern, uh, is it okay to go to the teacher? Uh, I know that uh, sometimes parents are encouraged to be part of a classroom, and sometimes teachers can feel that maybe the parents are stepping over the line. When is it okay to go to a teacher and, and express some concerns? Certainly, I think it's important to stay connected with the teacher at all times. And if you have a concern, uh, my recommendation would be to voice that sooner rather than wait. Uh, if there is a problem developing, uh, you can address it and take care of it rather than let it escalate into something larger. It seems like the whole theme of it is, is parents really should know their children and know what their children are doing and how they're reacting to the situation. Yes, it's very important to stay connected, to stay connected with their teachers, uh, with their friends, with uh, the parents of their friends, and to know their schedule, to know where they're at and what they're doing. Because sometimes this can be as traumatic for the parents as it is for the kids to go back to school like this, too. Absolutely. Well, Doctor, you have some uh, great information for us. Thank you so much for being here, uh, Dr. Jason. I know that uh, it's, a, it's a brand new time. It is an exciting time for everybody, and uh, it can be a little nerve-wracking, too. So thank you so much for your uh, suggestions. Appreciate it. And we'll be right back after this break. We all take different paths in life. At Central Bank, we understand this. With a comprehensive selection of financial services and expert advice, we'll help you meet all your needs. Whether you're getting your first home, preparing for a growing family, or planning for your children's futures, Central Bank is always there for you. Central Bank, showing you the way. Practice does make perfect. Some things you'll understand more and more over time. Like how experience matters when choosing a heart program. At St. Elizabeth Medical Center, we've performed over 10,000 open heart surgeries and saved countless lives. Numbers like that add up to something she can understand today. And that is that her dad's back in her life. St. Elizabeth Medical Center. How medicine should be. Six. That's the number. Six out of ten Americans are now in debt. That's over half the country. So if you're in trouble with debt, you're not alone. If your credit card bills are piling up and your balance just isn't going down, call Consolidated Credit now. They'll get the credit card companies to reduce or eliminate your interest. They'll consolidate your bills into one easy payment. And they'll cut your monthly payment by up to 50%. All that so that you can pay off your debt fast. Six out of ten people may be in debt, but one call to Consolidated Credit can get you out. They're the freedom people. Free, free, free. Give me freedom. Only Consolidated Credit has the Freedom Quest program. Call now. 1-800-530-5706. 1-800-530-5706. Consolidated Credit. When credit card debt is the problem, they're the solution. Welcome back. Now it's time for Medical Minutes, and today's Medical Minutes are being presented by Gateway Rehabilitation Hospital. 
According to a recent study reported in the archives of general psychiatry, a poor sense of smell may be the first sign of Alzheimer's. This devastating disease affects more than 5 million Americans, and right now there is no cure. Researchers found that those study participants who had difficulty identifying common smells such as lemon, cinnamon, banana, well, they may be more likely to develop problems. Medical professionals have previously noted that those already diagnosed with Alzheimer's seem to suffer from a dulled sense of smell. Perhaps the development of scratch and sniff tests could help determine a person's risk for this progressive brain disorder and increase early detection. The study's test results could be especially important if scientists find ways to slow or stop Alzheimer's. Our next story brings us news that the FDA has recently approved a new computerized method of dispensing medications to patients at home, and this is a brilliant idea. This device is about the size of a bread box. It's called EMMA, Electronic Medication Management Assistant. Patients still receive prescription drugs from their pharmacy, but instead of a bottle of pills, the drugs come in a blister pack. At home, those drugs are inserted into EMMA, where they are stored. Now, when it's time for a dosage to be taken, a sound alerts the patient. Then, after pressing a button, the dosage is released into a tray. This computerized pill box is especially helpful for older patients or those people with complicated dosing schedules. It's a great idea. That's the Medical Minutes for this edition of Healthline, and a special thank you to our sponsor, Gateway Rehabilitation Hospital. We'll be right back after this break. One issue. John Droud, the host of Education Issues on ICN6, ends each show with those words. It's because the success of our students determines how bright our future will be. Each week, John focuses on the schools, students, and education professionals of Northern Kentucky. Join John Droud each week for a new discussion. Education Issues, weekly on ICN6. Ask Mike Carpenter the secret behind Newport Cleaners, and chances are he'd say speed. You see, clothes are brought into a drop-off location, cleaned and pressed at the plant, and returned back for pickup, all within 24 hours. To help keep up with it all, Mike switched his broadband service to Insight Business. Not only does he find it faster and more reliable than DSL, but the Insight local support team stops by frequently. After all... Hey, Mike. How you doing? Their clothes need cleaning, too. Insight Business. Whether your kids are active in neighborhood sports or are serious competitors, the basics of sports nutrition can be useful for just about every family. Our next guest is familiar to many viewers. Rita Heikenfeld is Macy's regional culinary expert. She is also co-author of this book, The Official Snack Guide for Beleaguered Sports Parents. Rita, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for inviting me on. We talk a lot about youngsters' nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, kids who are very active, though, have different special needs when it comes to nutrition. Though. That's right, Betsy, they really do. Um, and in our book, we use a strategy that's long been used by professional athletes and Olympic athletes um, for sports nutrition, not only to enhance their performance, but to prevent injuries as well. And the strategies that we use in the book are so easy for kids to follow. They're inexpensive, they're easy to do, and they really work. And hydration is one of the most important aspects of sports nutrition for kids because, as you know, we've, we've read the reports about kids just dying on the field. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about hydration, how to make your own sports drinks to um, help kids along. Well, let's talk a little bit about hydration. Okay. Of course, we think about water. We think mm -hmm. about sports drinks. Sports right. drinks, of course, the last 10, 15 years have been very popular, not just for the mm -hmm. elite athletes, but it's con 
gone right down to youngsters, grade school, high schools using sports right. drinks. We all drink them. Mm -hmm. We all drink them. But first of all, uh, water is so important. A uh, child needs to be very hydrated. And the reason is when a child is exerting energy, uh, their body doesn't react to heat and humidity like an adult does. What happens is they're slower to react. They don't sweat as much. So they may not even know that they're dehydrated. So that's a, a real cause for some injury and also a decline in athletic performance. So by drinking enough water and a proper sports drinks, they can be hydrated all during the game and even after the game so that they stay healthy. So how do you get kids to drink enough water, enough fluid? Okay, well first of all, cold water right out of the fridge is best, 40 degrees or ice water because mm -hmm. their body um, absorbs a lot more that way. And before the game, when you get in the car, they should take a quart of cold water right with them. And they can decorate the uh, uh, bottle like this. They can decorate it. I've just put some lines on this bottle. As they leave the house, they should be sipping about eight ounces of water. And all during the event, they should be sipping water. And after the event, they should at least have a glass of water. So by the time that game is finished, this bottle should be empty. And how about sports drinks? As we said, they are very popular. Mm -hmm. But they're loaded with sugar. They are. They are. Not only loaded with sugar, um, but you have to have the right amount of uh, carbs, too. A proper sports drink for children will be about a 6 to 8% carb solution. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the sports drinks you buy, I mean, the advantage is they're ready to go. Disadvantage is if you have several children, they're inexpensive, and, but you can make your own sports drink, and you know exactly what goes into it. I'm going to show you how to do that mm -hmm. right now. You're going to start off with um, a juice that has 100, at least 100% vitamin C, read labels, no added sugar, so orange juice, this says 120%, and I'm going to add about a half a cup of, of orange juice. To that, you want to add about twice as much water, and that brings that down to a, whoops, a 6 to 8% carb solution. I'm making a mess here, but you get the idea. <laughs> um, and that really uh, fuels working muscles. Now, um, you want to add a dash of salt, and the reason is that will uh, provide some more sodium because they lose so much, and that uh, gives an electrolyte balance. Mm -hmm. But the advantage of a homemade sports drink, say, uh, or a bottle of soda pop, I know our kids have all wanted it. Mm -hmm. This is how much sugar is in one can, 12 ounces, a bottle or can of soda pop. Mm. It's almost four tablespoons. Wow. So that's a lot of, of, of just simple carbs. And what they're going to do, if they drink soda pop, it's going to give them a high. They're going to crash. Um, when they have this uh, nutritionally correct sports drink, just the right amount of carbs to, for their working muscles, it's not going to upset their tummy. It's not going to lay there. It's really going to give them good performance. So we've talked about fluids. How mm -hmm. about snacks? What's a healthy snack that uh, our youngsters who are very active, what's a good snack for them? Well, um, before there's different snacks that you would use pre and post game. Um, there are uh, smoothies. And, you know, smoothies are wonderful because they're liquid, and a, a child will digest them much more easy. And you can even freeze smoothies to give them some uh, popsicles that are healthy, too. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how to make a healthy smoothie if you'd like. All right. Please okay. do. All right. This is one of my favorites in the book. It's called Orange Cream Sickle Smoothie. Ooh, sounds and good. it is just delicious. You're going to start off with some milk, about two and a half cups. I'm using fat-free skim milk. Mm -hmm. Now, you can also, Betsy, use soy milk if you like or rice milk. Think of what your child likes. And to that, you want to add eight ounces of any flavored yogurt, but I like vanilla. And you can use fat-free or whole yogurt, whatever you like. And to that, about six ounces, if I can grab this here, of orange juice, frozen concentrate um, orange juice that's thawed, mm -hmm. about six ounces. And just to um, jazz it up a little bit, a splash of vanilla. That is it. You want to put the lid on, and you can whirl it up. And the nice thing about this is, there you go. Extras can be frozen, mm -hmm. but this serves at least six children, and it's really delicious. And you can add banana to it if you need to, you know, have like a boost of potassium. There's many, many ways that you can make this sports drink, but look at this. This looks just delicious. Oh, that does. So healthy. Great for post-game because it's got a little more fat. Not so good for right before the game, mm -hmm. um, but a wonderful breakfast. Again, it's liquid. The, the kids will be able to digest it better than solids, especially if they have a, a like a weak stomach or they don't want to take time to eat. So that tastes really great. great. Yes, that, that's that's 
Good for adults, too. I know. Not just you know what? <laughs> I always drink that, and then I add a little bit of flax oil to mine, so um, oh. make it just augment it a little bit. That's terrific, Rita. Thank you so You're much welcome. for being with us. And if you would like more information about these recipes, you can visit Rita's website. It is www.abouteating.com. Rita, thanks so much. You're welcome. We'll be back with House Calls right after this. We all take different paths in life. At Central Bank, we understand this. With a comprehensive selection of financial services and expert advice to meet all your needs, Central Bank is there to guide you down your path in life, wherever it may take you. Central Bank, showing you the way. Get out of credit card debt now with Safeguard Debt Management Services. Safeguard is a debt management company dedicated towards helping you get out of your mounting credit card debt while still meeting your monthly financial obligations. Regardless of your credit history, Safeguard negotiates with your creditors and lowers your interest rate down to 0 to 10%. We consolidate all of your credit card payments into one low monthly payment. You can save thousands of dollars. The bottom line, Safeguard got me out of debt. Call now for a free no-obligation analysis. Ask Mike Carpenter the secret behind Newport Cleaners, and chances are he'd say speed. You see, clothes are brought into a drop-off location, cleaned and pressed at the plant, and returned back for pickup, all within 24 hours. To help keep up with it all, Mike switched his broadband service to Insight Business. Not only does he find it faster and more reliable than DSL, but the Insight local support team stops by frequently. After all... Hey, Mike. How you doing? Their clothes need cleaning, too. Insight Business. Practice does make perfect. Something she'll understand more and more over time. Like how experience matters when choosing a heart program. At St. Elizabeth Medical Center, we've performed over 10,000 open heart surgeries and saved countless lives. Numbers like that add up to something she can understand today. And that is that her dad's back in her life. St. Elizabeth Medical Center, how medicine should be. Our House Calls segment gives you, the viewer, an opportunity to ask questions about your own medical concerns. We have doctors from the Northern Kentucky Medical Society ready to answer your questions. Our first question comes from Anne in Walton. She writes, My sister is considering making an appointment to go to an infertility specialist, but her biggest concern is that if she agrees to treatments, she may end up having multiple births. What are the chances that she would have more than one baby? We asked Dr. Sharif Abadala to answer this question. Well, that's a very legitimate concern that many individuals have about infertility treatment. It's important to know that many of the treatments that we offer have slightly increased multiple pregnancy rates. By that I mean that the normal everyday multiple pregnancy rate is about 25 to 3%. Some of our treatments offer multiple pregnancy rates that are not greater than 7 to 8%. Also, there are advances in high-tech procedures like in vitro fertilization that allow us to replace just a single embryo now, making the chance of a multiple birth not more than the natural background rate. It's also important to know that the sooner you come, the simpler the treatments that we can use and the lower chance of having a multiple birth. Dr. Nancy Swikert answers this question from Ben and Cheryl in Union. Our five-year-old son has had numerous ear infections since he was three, and we wondered if this could cause permanent hearing loss. What should we do, and should we take him to a specialist? Well, we rarely really consider children, of course, our special commodity. And children with untreated ear infections run a very high risk of having permanent hearing problems. But if you get your child treated correctly and follow up as you're supposed to with an infection, that usually won't happen. Young children under age three can have many colds, so to speak, to up to 12 in a year, lasting five to 10 days, and they don't usually need antibiotics. But if your child has frequent infections that requires an antibiotic, 
more than four times a year after age four, there may be something else going on. We like to look at the family. Maybe the parents are smoking, and that does increase the risk. Maybe the child is not eating a proper diet. That increases the risk. Maybe there's allergies in the family. So we don't want our children to have hearing problems, so we do encourage follow-up. If the child is not responding or has frequent infections, as we said, then we refer them to an ear, nose, and throat doctor or to an allergist to see if they need additional treatment to prevent hearing loss. Our final question comes from Melvin in Newport. My wife and I are 65 years old and we've been hearing about this screening test for abdominal aortic aneurysms. What is that and is it something that we should be tested for? Well, we went to Dr. Barry Dick for this answer. Melvin, uh, an abdominal aneurysm is a, a weakness in the main artery of your, uh, of your body that runs through the abdomen and goes down and divides to each of your legs. The risk of an aneurysm is that they can rupture if they're above a certain size and they can be screened for with an ultrasound or a CAT scan or if you're thin, your doctor may be able to feel that on a physical exam. So that would be my first recommendation if you're concerned about this is to ask your doctor to examine you. The people that uh, need to be screened has, has been uh, debated for some time. This year for the first time Medicare will pay for a single screening test in males over 65 who have smoked in the past. Um, the uh, other risk factor is a family history of aneurysm and anyone with a family history of aneurysm can be screened. But if your doctor uh, suspects an aneurysm, that test can be done as well. Uh, the um, companies that do screening tests for cash do that obviously to make money, but they're fairly accurate and if you're very worried about it and you don't have risk factors, you can certainly have the screening done for peace of mind. But the main risk factors are age 65 male smokers and family history. And depending on the size, they should be either followed or repaired depending on your overall health. Thank you, doctor, and thanks to all our doctors, Dr. Sharif Awadala, Dr. Nancy Swigert, and Dr. Barry Dick for their professional medical advice. Well, we've come to the end of this month's show, and we would like to thank our guests, Dr. Jason Bloomline and Rita Heikenfeld. And if you missed some of the information listed on today's program, or if you have a question that you would like answered in our house call segment, I'll be sure to go to the Northern Kentucky Medical Society website and just click on the Healthline button. We hope you will join us again next month for a brand new program when we will address those health issues that are important to you and your family. Goodbye for now. I'm Betsy Ross, and this has been Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. Everyone loves Insights Bundle, cable, high-speed internet, and phone. And when our customers speak, we listen. Due to overwhelming response, Insight needs to expand its direct sales team. If you have a positive attitude and can work independently and are interested in a dynamic outside sales position with outstanding earning potential and excellent benefits, plus discounted services in your home, come grow with us. Apply in person at our Florence office or send your resume to Insights.